All right, so we have a construction update today. Well, I mean, it's not really a construction update, but it's pretty packed with a lot of information. So buckle up, because here we go. So I don't know if you noticed by this shot, but something arrived. Can you spot it? I mean, it's right there. <laughs> I'm kidding. So another construction trailer arrived, um, and the construction trailer is for Fox Construction um, Limited, and uh, that company specializes in fabrication, which means um, they can set up roller coasters in this case. Uh, this company has built places like the Ripley's Aquarium down in Toronto, so they have a great reputation. Um, and uh, definitely when you see in the later clip too, a lot of their equipment has arrived. So like we planned, vertical construction will probably start um, this week, and uh, it's definitely going to, uh, like we predicted, by the end of July. So again, it's Fox Limited Construction, and they specialize in fabrication, and their equipment right here arrived. So the... Um, little uh, shipping container there and the uh, scissor lift uh, like we have two now are for uh, vertical construction and they are definitely ready to go. Everything looks like it's on site and good to go. Um, so I'm guessing it'll be either tomorrow or Wednesday that they start vertical construction. Now, it's not going to be too exciting. I'm predicting they'll start with the storage shed and the transfer track and then the support beams for the station all that. And you won't see track being fully erected until probably after the announcement but they are definitely off to a quick start. This is definitely the earliest start I've seen on a dive coaster. And uh, under the earliest start I've seen on probably any coaster other than Steel Vengeance uh, for Cedar Fair. So definitely very exciting nonetheless. Now at the park today, we discovered something very interesting. These markers have been there for a while um, and we weren't able to see what was written on them due to them being flipped out. But due to the storms, we've been able to get a better view on this. So this is column 63 right, and there are a bunch of markers through here that add up and match our blueprints. So now we know that the halfway point on this dive coaster is column 63, the halfway point. That's insane. So this coaster, its halfway point has more support beams than Val Raven. Again, just for a refresher, Val Raven has 51 support columns. How is a dive coaster going to make it through more than double the layout of Val Raven? It may not be total foot length, uh, double the length of Val Raven, but we are definitely looking at more than double the amount of support columns than that to Val Raven on this coaster, which is insane if you think about it. It raises a lot of questions. What's going to happen? What does the quotations most unique mean? It's very interesting. So to put this into better perspective, um, the red marker is where these um, column 63 is marked. The end of it, uh, 245 meters away, 804 feet away, is the brake run-in station. So this coaster has to work its way all the way back, not including up, down, um, turns, and inversions adding to the feet, but that's the distance. So we're forecasting or predicting that this coaster has about 1,300 feet of track to work through to get back to the brake run. Column 63, and it has about 1,300 feet of track to get through to get back to the station, guys. Think about it. That's crazy. Food for thought. We'll get to that stuff a little later because there's an interesting teaser that we have that was found at Cedar Point today. Um, so stay tuned for that because that raises a lot of questions too. And we got a tweet reply from Wonderland. So very interesting. Um, so lots of shipments have been coming in. This is overloaded galore, the shipping area, completely overloaded. What's interesting about the shipping area is some things in it. So the uh, crates obviously say dive coaster, blah, blah, blah. You already know that. And there's lots of them. Now, what's super interesting is if you look on b &M coasters, they have these support structure beams underneath the spine of the lift hills that hold up the catwalks. Now, um, on these support beams for the catwalks in this storage area is the heights that they will be located on the lift hill. We know that because it goes from zero to right now 234. Very interesting because we now know, and there's a lot that we couldn't get a good view on. Um, we now know that the, uh, the catwalk support beams go at least up to 234 feet. So already this coaster is above Val Raven's height. So here's one of them, 229 or 221 left. Um, 221 again. 
So very interesting. If that's what it means, it's much larger than Valraven's drop because we're adding the 10 foot valley plus the um, that's 30 left too. Um, then we're adding the uh, the tunnel on top of that. So we're getting up to 250 plus foot drop already with the information that we have. There's 10 right one. So it's it's very intriguing as to what's going on. And I believe these are 30, if I'm not mistaken, or no, 227. 227 right one. And uh, yeah. And the 403 is a code. So on all the track, so ignore the 403. It does not mean anything. Uh, the coaster is not 403 feet in the air. Um, all the track pieces and all that have codes. There's some that say 901. Um, there's some that say 9502. It's the code for probably the section of the coaster. Um, so there you have 227 again, right? So it's very interesting. Is this coaster going to be large? Yes, the answer is yes. It's going to be larger than Valraven at this point. It is. You cannot argue against it. The evidence is there. Amusement Insiders is definitely going to continue with its strong stance on the possibility, the possibility quotations of this being a Giga coaster. But we again, we are predicting around the 250 mark. Now, this interesting teaser popped up at Cedar Point today, and we have somewhat of a confirmation that this has to do with Canada and Canada's Wonderland. This is um, one of the representatives from the park. Keep your boots on at all times responding to this. And just to go over some of the facts, um, the yellow pine is um, usually located in New York and Ontario, and the sycamore tree is located in Ontario. And it's interesting that the Sycam Sycamore Mining and Minerals Company is named after an Ontario-based tree. So this teaser definitely, in my opinion, references um, Canada's Wonderland, and what's interesting about it is the little details in it. You are all going to roll your eyes and be angry at the discussion of a giga, but you are just going to have to deal with it at this point. Um, I'm sorry, but there is too much evidence moving forward that for someone to ignore this whole giga theory. Um, so what's interesting is Canada imports and exports this tree called yellow pine, and this references a station, or sorry, yellow pine. And now in, the, in this picture also, you can see things that look like maybe what our station could look like in the top right. You also see number five is alive, which is super interesting, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, um, they reference the boots in the tweet, and uh, the boots are interesting too, but here's the close-up of the building. And what's interesting is the train tracks coming out of the structure head in the same direction as the dive coaster. That could be literally nothing at all, and that's totally understandable. But if you also notice... Uh, the entrance into the train track station almost shows like where the transfer track would be and it turns that way too. Again, that could be nothing. That's overanalyzing the image. So we'll just throw that in the garbage for later or recycling for later. So in this photo, you have what looks like the station. The whole teasing poster is about mining and finding a better mining route and a better way to get more capacity out of mining and more efficiency. So to me, that definitely screams Canada's Wonderland's new mine themed coaster for the Klondike gold rush um, and about opening a new facility to get uh, the gold over to the Cedar Creek Mining Company a lot faster. What's also interesting is this expansion plan phase one. If we go all the way back to Matt Wiemitz interview with a uh, local news um, station, they referenced that Canada's Wonderland was getting a big upgrade. Now, this might be that big upgrade. Then we see number five is alive. But again, we'll get to that in just a sec. So here we have some numbers on the crate. Now here is where I ask for help. Anyone that goes to Cedar Point often, can you please in the next couple days, if possible, get a close up image of this poster? We notice that there's some hidden numbers all over it and we would love to analyze them. This number to me looks like coordinates and I would love to find these numbers in detail and look up those coordinates for a better understanding of what this could be for and what it's about. Um, we also have the number five on a mining cart here typed upside down, and we have no idea what that could be referencing. What do you guys think? So here it says, after numerous years of searching, we have finally located the lost rem remnants of number five and are formulating a plan to bring it back into service once again. This will increase the capacity and yield from the mines. That means less work for you. So... This goes back to the whole number five. What could number five be referencing? Number five is alive. How many giga coasters are there in North America? There's currently four operating giga coasters in North America. This would be number five. I know you all just rolled your eyes in your head. 
why is Giga being brought up again? But we had Giga hidden on the last teaser poster. Um, you now have them referencing Five is Alive. It could be referencing Ziz, even. Like, Ziz is coming back to life. And it's going to be the fifth Giga coaster um, in the chain and in North America. You have uh, the undeniable fact that this coaster has a ton of layout it needs to make it through. This is a very unique dive coaster, despite what you think of it being a Giga or not. That's fine. But we know this coaster is going to be a lot larger than Val Raven. In whatever aspect you want to take that, it is definitely going to be larger in terms of length at minimum. And in terms of length, you definitely are going to need a little extra height. Dive coasters lose a lot of speed very quickly. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a Giga coaster, and that is fine. Playing devil's advocate, it could just mean maybe a different train design, maybe six across seating. Who knows? It could be anything. Anyways, what do you guys think about all this? What do you think about the teaser? What do you think about the 63 columns halfway through the ride and this coaster definitely being double the length of Val Raven in terms of columns so far? And uh, what else? Are you guys seeing anything in this poster that I'm not? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a like. Comment down below what you think um, and subscribe if you haven't. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye.